everyone! We're here at Adelaide's Honey Bee Farm. We're going to meet with Farmer Paul and learn all about the honeybees living here. Let's go take a look! Hi Farmer Paul, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too Hannah, welcome to Adelaide's Honey Bee Farm. So this is a farm? This is a farm. I always think of farms as having cows or vegetables, so why would someone own a honey bee farm? Well, we pr our bees produce honey and we bottle that honey. But we also uh, have our bees for pollination service, so we can bring our honeybees to a firm and they can help pollinate strawberries or blueberries and, uh, and help the farmer. Oh wow, that's really interesting. Come on, let's get ready. Okay. So Farmer Paul, what is pollination and why is it so important? Okay, pollination basically is, uh, is um, there's, there's wind pollination where the wind blows uh, the pollen off of the trees to the different other trees. But with, 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 with fruits and vegetables and uh, like berries, what happens is a honeybee will actually land on the flower and as it lands on the flower, pollen will actually stick to the honeybee and they're, they're gathering they're gathering the pollen and then when they go to the next flower what happens is that's that's transmitting that that pollen to another flower which makes the flower seeds turn viable and it becomes a it becomes a, a fruit mm -hmm. one of these on the farm near where I live so they must help farmers with their fruits and vegetables do they? They do. Uh, a beekeeper can actually transport a hive like this and and place it into a field say of uh, strawberries that are just about to bloom. The flowers are just about to bloom and uh, and that's what helps all our fruits and vegetables. So bees are really important for us? They are very important and and without them uh, we wouldn't be able to have uh, one third of our, our world food supply. Oh wow. Yeah. So what is this and what is it used for? This is a, a, a smoker and it's a very important tool for, for a beekeeper. What we basically do is we give a little bit of smoke in front of the beehive and, and, and into the beehive with the bees. And what the bees do, uh, if you could think about them in the wild, a honeybee could be up in a tree, a, a honeybee hive, and all of a sudden they think there's smoke, meaning there's a forest fire. And if they think there's a forest fire, they'll consume honey and they're thinking they might have to leave and abandon the hive. So they'll consume lots of honey and when they consume the honey, it makes them kind of logy and like, like us after Jake's dinner on <laughs> Sunday. And they want to just kind of lie around and they're, and the other thing that smoke does is it, it covers the pheromone and the way for the bees to communicate. So if there was a bee that was concerned about us being in the hive, they usually can't tell the other bees. So it's a way to calm them. It is a way to calm them. So this brown that looks like a cookie okay. color, that's all baby bees that are, are capped and about to emerge and come out. Oh. So we're looking now for the queen. How do honeybees make the honey? Well, basically a honeybee will go out to the flower and take the nectar out of it. And they have almost like a straw in their tongue and they'll take it and put it in their honey stomach. And what they'll do is they'll travel along and they'll feed that to another, another bee. Mm -hmm. And as they're exchanging that honey, they'll do that about three times. The honey is mixed with enzymes. And then when they put it into an actual cell, they'll fan their wings to dry the honey to less than 17% moisture content. And then what they do is they take wax and they cap it and they cover it over and that seals the honey and keeps, and keeps it, uh, it, it literally can last forever. So how would one bee tell another bee where all the flowers are? It's interesting because when a forager goes out and they're looking for flowers, they might find a patch of, uh, let's say, uh, it could be clover or, or strawberries, even five kilometers away. So they'll come back in the hive and they'll do almost like a figure eight. They're walking and at the same time they're shaking and they're, they're telling the other bees, uh, they're giving them their directions of where those flowers are exactly. And the bees will follow the sun as to the movements of that waggle dance and find right where those flowers are. Wow, right, the same flowers. The same flowers. <laughs> so just, uh, just watch this, Hannah. Oh. <gasps> so this is raw fireweed honey. Oh, wow. It's okay to have the honeycomb too? Like yep, yep, it's all edible. You can take that, yep. Yeah. And just 
can just eat the whole thing? You can, and you can spit out the wax after. It's like gum once you okay. chew the goodness out of it. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> no, you don't have to pretend. No, it's really good. <laughs> it's actually really good. Oh, we know it's good. So thank you, Farmer Paul, for bringing us onto the farm and helping us learn all about the honeybees. Thank you, Hannah, for coming. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. We just got back from Farmer Paul's farm, and we're now here at Paradise Farms to meet with Farmer Aubrey. We're going to see what happens after a successful harvest. Hi, Farmer Aubrey. It's nice to meet you. And you too. So what happens next? Well, let's go around and have a look. This is where I actually take the shave the wax off the uh, frame, off the honey. And then I take the frame that's filled with honey and place it down in this drum. And this drum takes 12 frames. And then we get this drum going and centrifugal force will force all the honey out of the frames on the sides of, the, of this container here and it'll all come down and into this bucket down here. The whole process from there to there will take about, from getting this fill, maybe about 35 minutes from there down to here. And this is an 80 mesh screen and uh, that screen will catch most of the wax and it pushes the wax, most of the wax back here again. And we use that in our products uh, for our body care operation. So Farmer Aubrey, we know that bees make honey, but what else do they make from the, from the beeswax and everything? Well, our bees, they do a wonderful job of uh, making beeswax that we turn into candles, Christmas candles, and we have a variety of those. Uh, they also make uh, beeswax for our lip balms, mm -hmm. which is, is a big, big item. We have about six or seven different kinds of lip balms. Uh, things like foot balms, people with tired feet on the feet all day long, they like the foot balm. Beeswax. Uh, beeswax, people uh, use beeswax for numerous uh, reasons. They, uh, musicians uh, use beeswax on their violin strings. Uh, uh, divers use, their, use this beeswax on their uh, zippers. And seamstress uh, people working with needles use it to coat needles. So there's dozens and dozens of ways and things you can do with beeswax. So Farmer Aubrey, is there anything else that we should know about bees and, and everything? Yeah, I think it's important to note that uh, without uh, bees in the world, we wouldn't have much food. Our food supply would be about uh, one third of what we have now. And uh, so, so uh, make sure that your family know, your friends know, not to be using a lot of chemicals, harsh chemicals on your lawns, on your flower beds, in your vegetable gardens, because this stuff will kill and harm uh, our honeybee population. So help us keep uh, honeybees in good health, and, uh, and, they, and they in turn will provide healthy things for us. Well, thank you so much. That's so interesting. Great. And it's really nice to meet you. And you too, <laughs> Hannah. I hope you all enjoyed visiting the honeybee farms with me today. I know I learned a lot and I hope you all did too.